Hi, everybody. Matt Scudero with the Credit Research Foundation. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for joining us on this very important topic for our discipline, understanding inflation. We're lucky enough to have Dr. Steve Isberg with us. Many of you know Steve uh, through CRF, as he is a senior fellow, uh, Credit Research Foundation, of course. Also chair, Department of Accounting, College of Business and Economics at Towson University. Uh, and Steve, great to have you back with us on this most important topic, as it really impacts the credit professional. As we think about uh, inflation and the impacts to credit lines, we think about inflation, the impacts to profitability, both internal to our own businesses, as well as external to our customers. Uh, you have some thoughts to share with us, some definitions about inflation, impacts and uh, how we should be thinking about it uh, as credit professionals. So Steve, I'm gonna pass you the baton. Great to have you again with us and uh, look forward to your, uh, your thoughts that you're gonna share with us. All right, thank you, man. It's always good to be back and back in front of a credit manager audience with uh, CRF. Um, again, always better to do it face to face, but uh, you know this is going to work pretty well today. So there are a number of different intentions we have for today. It's going to be a fairly short session. Uh, we're going to address the following questions. What is it that determines price levels? What drives inflation from both the supply and demand sides? What should concern credit managers about inflation? Uh, how has and is inflation currently behaving? And then what is the impact of monetary policy on this behavior? And then finally, what can we expect in the future? So prices are typically driven by the interaction of supply and demand in competitive markets. So the supply line here, the upward shifting to the, the upward, upward uh, sloping line to the right indicates the willingness of different providers to provide product into a market. And we can see from its upward slope that the higher the price level measured on the left axis, the greater the output level that suppliers are willing to provide into the markets. And conversely, as price decreases, we see that uh, users of product, consumers of product, are more willing to consume greater quantities of um, product within the market. So the supply curve shifts up to, uh, moves up to the right, the demand curve down to the right, and the market clearing price and output levels are typically going to uh, occur where those two lines intersect. So inflation can be driven by changes either on the supply side or the demand side or by some combination of changes in supply and demand. Um, most commonly, we talk about cost push inflation being on the supply side, and we talk about demand pull inflation being on the demand side. And we'll take a look at examples of both in the next few slides. So if we consider inflation due to shifting in supply, we're gonna start in the same space with a price level and an output level. We'll have our typical supply curve intersecting with our demand curve, creating the initial market clearing price. And then we'll look at what happens when there's a supply side um, impact. So in this particular case, for some reason, the supply is going to decrease. It's going to shift what we call to the left. You can see the arrow's got that shifting to the left. You could also view this as an upward shift. And as an upward shift, we'd look at this by saying at any given output level that we have, so any given output level, we would see a higher price would be needed before a producer would be wanting to supply into the market. All right, so it's either a, a leftward shift or an upward shift. And um, basically, this could be a cost push, all right, rising input prices. It could be a supply chain phenomenon like we've just seen, where all of a sudden the supply chain dries up, meaning that you're less able to provide product at any given price. And in either case, what's going to eventually happen within the market at the going market price, you're going to see a shortage develop. And in response to the shortage, you're going to see a higher price as the uh, shifting supply curve moves along the demand curve to reach a new market clearing price. So that would be an example of an, in, an increase in prices due to shifting supply, very similar to what we're seeing now. Now, to what degree should credit managers be concerned about this? If you're on the supply side of a transaction, to what degree should you be concerned about this type of inflation? What that's all gonna come down to is essentially what it is your 
demand curve looks like. So the demand curve that you face in your market on the part of your customer, and then one step further out, what the demand um, looks like from the perspective of your customers. So you're gonna look at your customer's demand for your product, and then you're gonna look at your customer's customer's demand for their product. And your concern is whether or not the demand for your product is elastic or inelastic. Now here, the only difference on this slide uh, from the previous slide is that we've added a second demand curve that we're gonna call demand I, that's the green curve, and then demand E is the original one that we had. So the demand E would be what we call the elastic and the demand I would be the inelastic. And what you can see is that along the green line, your customer is much less price sensitive than it would be moving along the E line. So for a given change in price, you get more movement along the demand curve if you're looking at demand curve E, and you get less output movement if you're moving along demand curve I. And what you can see here is if your supply curve shifts back or up, if you get some cost plus inflation, your ability to pass the impact of the inflation off onto your customer is gonna depend upon how steep um, the demand curve is for that particular customer. The steeper that is, as you can see, the greater your ability to push that cost increase onto your customer as a price increase at your level. And to the same degree, you're gonna to need to pay attention to what that same relationship looks like between your customer and your customer's customer. To the degree that your customer's customers are very price sensitive, they won't be able to pass that price increase on. If their customer's demand looks more like the green line, then they will be able to push that price increase onto their customers a little bit more easily. And that would affect your credit line decision, all right? The more easily your customer can push the price increase onto their customer, the more likely you are to be able to increase your credit line and sell them more product as prices go up. Now, you always have to bear in mind that the longer the duration of the inflation, the more likely the demand curve is gonna flatten out. And this is because your customers can look for substitute products and their customers can also look for substitute products. So in the shorter term, you may have a very inelastic steep demand curve. In the longer term, that's going to smooth out. It's gonna shallow out a little bit. So you always wanna be mindful of how long the inflation dur uh, duration is and what the impacts of the longer duration might be on your ability to continue to pass off that price increase and your customer's ability to pass it along as well. Now, the other thing that we can see in markets is increases in prices due to demand. So again, we start with our typical uh, solution where we have a market clearing price, and then we see an increase in the demand. So at any given output level, consumers are willing to pay more or at any given price, willing to consume more. And as in the case where we had a decrease in supply, when we have an increase in demand at the going market price, we will see a shortage develop. And as a result of the shortage, the prices will increase and you know, we'll have some inflation. The degree to which the prices will increase depends upon the degree to which um, that demand curve is shifted. So that's what we call demand pull inflation, All right? What happens in recessions? Well, in recessions, governments can be very involved in um, supporting the economy or governments can be less involved in supporting the economy. So in terms of a recession without government supports, typically what's gonna happen in a recession without government supports is that we'll get a decrease in the supply and at the same time, end up with a decrease in demand. And the impact on prices could be minimal. We could see prices increase. We could see prices decrease. It's all gonna depend upon the movement in the supply and the demand curves themselves. Now, if we add government supports, which is what we had during the COVID crisis, right? Again, we started with this um, market clearing price, and then we had a huge supply shock as, we had the COVID shutdown. 
And then the government came in and started to provide income support, direct income support, higher payments for, for um, unemployment benefits, uh, COVID stimulus checks. And what we tend to see is even larger shortages develop and higher prices result. So when you add the government support to a situation where we've seen a decrease in supply like COVID, actually magnify the impact of the shortages and the rising prices. And we can see that clearly in the differences in, in which, in, in different ways in which the economy behaved between the recession of 2008, 2009 and the COVID shutdown of 2020, 2021. So if you take a look at the measurements here, what we're looking at here are three measures of inflation, uh, one, a five and a 10 year trend, where in the dotted line, the one that shows more variation would be the one year annual inflation. And you can see that during the recession, we actually had a deflation, prices actually declined um, for, for a few months in 2008, 2009, and then recovered as we grew out of the recession. So notice that within the recession, we actually had deflation or lower inflation. During COVID, we had a recession. However, we also had significant inflation take place at the same time. And the reason for this has a lot to do with the existence of the government supports. So again, back in 2008, when the credit market started to collapse, the Fed stepped in increase the monetary base, which created funds that the banks could, could, uh, could loan. We still had significant decreases in the rate of inflation. So you could argue that this monetary infusion during the recession actually abated the deflation. Now the difference in this monetary infusion and the monetary infusion that we saw during COVID is essentially that the monetary infusion during COVID went into increased supports that were offered to individual consumers. So higher unemployment benefits, COVID stimulus checks. And you could see that because they went into directly supporting consumers, the inflationary impact was a lot greater. So what do we expect after all of this? Well, inflation is going to continue until the supply chain catches up with demand. Uh, direct government support is going to continue to feed inflationary tendencies as long as the government continues to offer the support. The degree to which the inflation continues is going to depend upon how the Federal Reserve behaves when it comes to money and interest rates. Interest rates are still low, monetary the money supply is still fairly high. The longer term impact is going to be the redistribution of real income from the lower to the upper income and wealth classes. Um, an increase in inflation, if you don't make up for that with a cost of living increase, is a one-time decrease in your long-term income and wealth. And you know, deflation, I think, in the longer run is a bigger economic concern than inflation because in a highly indebted economy, we can't really uh, handle a deflationary movement. So this has been short. And if you have questions, I'm sure that you can direct them to Matt, who can direct them to me. And once again, it's nice to be here uh, with this audience. Thank you for having me. Steve, it is nice to have you back with us. And again, thank you for that knowledge share. Important topic it is all over the news. Um, and as credit professionals, again, we need to think about how inflation impacts our own internal business, specifically the credit lines that we set for our customers, as well as the risk level of our customers externally, um, and what, what inflation does to the risk level of our customer, just as Steve has explained. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Again, uh, Steve, I want to thank you again for your support. Great to see you again. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. Hopefully we can do a recap on this topic. Always available. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, everybody. Take care.